Every person on this planet will die. We don't know when, and most don't know what will kill them. But it's not death we should fear. Death is ine inevitable. It's time. Time is our enemy. Time is the one commodity we cannot buy, we cannot stop. And if death of our beloved Ken has taught us anything, is to live life to the fullest and not wait. To take the trip, to start afresh, to visit family and friends, but more importantly, to know that time waits for no man. So the time is now. Today you're going to hear about a warrior, a man with more strength and courage than most. You hear about his life's journey, his life, likes, his people, his family, and the one he loved with all his heart. You'll hear stories from his loved ones and his friends. I am one of those friends. As I look around, I see many faces of sorrow. Ken would not have liked to be amongst such a crowd. He was far too happy to be sad. And if Ken were here, he'd wonder why so many of his family and friends didn't know each other. So please make the effort to say hi to a family member, to a friend of Ken's you never knew existed until now. I only know six people here, to be honest with you. I look out on the crowd and I think, wow, Ken touched a lot of lives. My name is Bill Edgar. To me, Ken was a smiling assassin. The only time I didn't see him smile when is, is when he spoke about those who infiltrated his and Stacey's family business and destroyed it from the inside out. But Ken wouldn't allow them to destroy his name, to destroy his name, Stacey's name or his people's name. Ken's integrity was never for sale and he never lost sight of who he was. Ken never pretended to be someone he wasn't. Ken was thought a fool by those who tried to take advantage of him, especially by those who couldn't understand him. Even I couldn't understand him when he got so excited. And the more he did, the faster he talked, which meant the harder I had to listen or just say, Ken, for fuck's sake, please stop. I don't know what you're saying. But I never made the mistake of thinking Ken a fool. I recall a conversation with Ken and this is what I heard. Stacy, you've got a dolphin. I've got a boat. I've got two ducks quacking. <laughs> Ken was so excited telling that story. The more he did, the more he laughed, which made me laugh. And when I walked away, I was still laughing until it hit me. What the fucking hell was I laughing at? <laughs> then I realized it wasn't the story. It was Ken's ability to make you happy, laugh or smile just by being in his presence. Ken was a doorman and he also had an open door policy. If anybody knocked for any reason, Ken wouldn't just open the door, but he'd invite them in. And it didn't matter who they were, where they were from. On most occasions, Stacey would be shocked to see so many people she never knew in her house. You'd be forgiven for thinking Ken was playing a joke on Stacey, but he wasn't. He was genuinely interested in people. As you can see, everybody here. I never heard Ken say a bad word about anybody. And not once did I ever hear Ken say anything about another person behind their back. Despite what he went through and the hurt that he felt and the hurt that Stacy was going through. Ken was a man's man, honest, kind and caring. He was firm but fair. Ken feared no man, but he didn't like stress. He found stress foreign and complicated. It wasn't in his nature to understand stress. Even when the doctor said he had to say his goodbyes, Ken wasn't under any pressure or stress. He just said, that wasn't very nice. 
<laughs> he told me to prepare and say my goodbyes. That wasn't very nice at all. Ken was easily pleased. He was very humble and blessed. He thought everything in life was an adventure. Even when laying on his deathbed, he would say, well, this is a new experience. <laughs> what an adventure I'm going to have. When I last spoke to Ken, he said, death is most inconvenient. Little did we know just how inconvenient it would be. A beautiful smile, his hand that covered his mouth whilst he laughed, his eyes that didn't just see you but looked at you. He's not caring if you had two dollars or two million dollars. His love for those around him, his love for his people and his mateship is what you will remember about my friend, our friend, your friend, Ken.